What if I told you there was one ingredient that could change everything on how fish grow? After a year, I'm ready to show you the results side by side, tank by tank. This isn't theory, this is real. And the proof is right here. So I've been in the hobby for decades and there's been a big controversy about bee parts. So approximately about a year ago, I decided to do this test. It took me about three months to get the product right, exactly how I wanted it, where it wouldn't explode in the tank, it would hold together, but it had all the nutrients I wanted for my discus. Either you love it or you hate it. Either way is fine. It's kind of like the same thing I felt about flake food. I used to think flake food was worthless. I have changed my whole theory on that. Make the bee part correctly. How to get out the long strain collagens. And collagen is a positive, especially as you get older, we need collagen in our diet. But for discus, it is not optimal. Everything else about bee part is optimal, but long chain collagens are not. So it took me three months to figure out how to remove those. And my members know that I was actually selling bee part from another distributor. Well, that B part started to come in a little funky. So I did some testing on it and I found that they were not pulling the collagens out like I'd asked them to. But not just that, there were some chunks in there that were like, it almost felt like plastic. I bought like five pounds at a time, sometimes 10 pounds. And when the last batch came in, I rejected it. Now he would not refund my money and I just said, fine, I will create my own. It's been a year journey creating this product. And these tanks are the proof here and here. This is the same spawn. For the last two and a half to three months, I've been feeding this tank only bee part. My freeze dried bee part and my pellet bee part. We want to use it as a supplement in a diet, right? We do not want to feed just directly bee part. So you'll see in the ingredients that the first three ingredients are actually seafood and then the bee part. This tends to help bring down the worry of feeding too much bee part to your fish. Now, what I am learning in this experiment is you can't really overfeed it if it's made correctly. The reason people were getting in trouble with bee part is because of the long chain collagens. And these guys have been eating it for three months. Above is just regular pellets and regular food. Now all my food is quality, so these guys are not stunted, but the growth rate is night and day between the bottom tank and the top tank. There is a huge difference, and this is off of the same spawn and splitting those in two. Now I tried to vary the sizes. I did not want to just grab the big ones and put them below, so I kind of went 50-50. I kept a lot of the big ones up top and then split them and then had a good range from small, medium, and large throughout that spawn. So I tried to make that as fair as possible because I wanted this experiment to work not just for me, but proof on camera. Now, this is proof to me that there is a difference in growing out fish with bee part. Now, do I feed all my fish bee part? I do, I feed guppies bee part, I feed all my plecos bee part, I feed everybody bee part, but it's about the amount of bee part, right? Like I would never take a chunk of bee part and throw it in my tank because that would not be good. I feed it to every fish in my room that I keep gets B part once or twice a week. This tank up here has been restricted from B part except for today. I'm making this video, so I wanna get these guys to grow. They're still not stunted. They still look great. Great eye to body ratio. So they look fine as far as not stunting. I'm gonna try to get those in the next two months to catch up and I'm gonna see if I can do it. But what the problem is now is these guys are gonna go bigger and bigger. You can see my fish over here. Those have all been growing out on bee part in the last year. So this is kind of what you see is good eye to body ratio. And that's why I want my breeders on bee part as they grow out. Not only does it accelerate, but it just tends to give their bodies a little bit of bulk. Now I know there's gonna be people that just are anti bee part and that's fine. I, it's fine, you do not have to leave comments and tell me how bad bee part. I understand, I was that guy. I understand that. Just like I didn't like flight food. I've changed my mind on both because one, I see the difference, okay? What I try to do is put the tank on top. Obviously, there's no heaters in my tank. I do keep them for my zebra plecos here just because it's right by a window. But 
what I want to do is the top tanks run about one degree warmer. So that was a tank I wanted to not feed beef hard in. And then the one tank below one degree cooler, I did want to feed beef hard because I figured if it was opposite, there might have been that theory that, oh, the warmer tank to help them grow. So that was kind of my thought process on that. And these guys are actually eating the beef heart. So the freeze-dried beef heart cube can be fed a few ways. It can be pressed on the glass. Now, if you're going to press it on the glass, you have to almost crush it. Because what you don't want is a cube floating in the tank and then taking forever to sink. Because it will go putrid. Remember, all my foods are real foods. There's no additives so what you don't want is the food floating in the tank because then it takes a while for them to break it up so you want to kind of smash it against the glass if you're going to hold it in a cube form you have to hold it for like 20 seconds now it's not 100 percent but my dilemma was when i first started making it was it started polluting the tank it started to make the tanks go cloudy so i had to put more binders in binder 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 because pure b part which is 100 percent pure b part grown locally here if it has a chance to break apart and get in the tank and then get in the cycle, it's gonna go putrid. So that was my thought process on the freeze dry part. Now the pellet is a soft pellet. The pellet is amazing and all my fish eat the pellets. But the freeze dry cube, I tend to feed more to discus, but I do break it up in my guppy tanks and all my plecos and angelfish, they all get it. It's just not the main diet. It's like a supplement, like a dessert or, you know, a fancy steak once in a while so I'm not testing it on them they're just getting it as a residual in my room when I'm feeding but the discus do get it and I'm gonna do more testing with the other fish because I find that my guppies are turning more colorful my angelfish are growing faster the plecos seem to be a little bit thicker in the in the body so I'm gonna keep working with that but my main goal today was to talk about these two tanks and the difference you can almost see twice the growth down here to up there. My goal of this video was to prove to myself that there was a difference as far as feeding and not feeding growing fish. Now, I do feed all my discus. My adults get it. They get it once or twice a week. There's no fear of them bloating out on it or anything like that. And you can see the growth on these guys. Most of these fish here were small a year ago and they started on the beef hard diet. But this was an experiment I wanted to try and make sure that I could see a difference from feeding it, not feeding it, growing out small discus. It's very important that it's made correctly. If you're gonna cut it up and get all the veins out, that's not enough. It's about the long chain collagen inside the meat. That has to be taken out. Now, I've come up with a way to do it, and I don't know if there's anybody else that's doing this, but it was important. If you watch the videos at the end that pop up, I showed you the long chain collagen in one of those videos. Now there's two videos, I'm not sure which one. I don't watch my videos once I make them because in editing I have to watch these videos 10, 15 times and I don't like to listen to myself talk if I don't have to. So it's hard to edit videos, you know. It'd be easier if someone else edited my videos and one day maybe that'll happen. But right now I have to do it. So once a video goes live, I very, very rarely watch it. So when someone asks me in a video, hey, when you said this or you, you showed this, I don't really go back because I'm not going to sit and watch one of my videos again. So why is beef heart so effective? It's pure protein. There's nothing that's bad about it except for the long chain collagen. Once you get those out, the, the fish can digest it. Now, those long chain collagen are actually good for humans. So as we get older, we tend to lose our collagen. That's why our skin gets saggy and that's why we lose elasticity in our, in our skin. So it's good for humans, but it's not good for digestive tracts of discus. Discus have very long, long tracts and that collagen will get bunched up in it. So even though I'm feeding my guppies, I'm watching them very close to see if they're having issues and they're not having issues. And the colors that pop on these guppies is insane. But would I recommend feeding beef heart to guppies? Probably not. But my job here and my goal here is to learn. I want to experiment. I want to fail. I want to get to the next level. I want to be able to say something and say, oh yeah, I've done that. And this is what I have found. Okay. So this room is important for taking stuff that's online, myth or fact, and learning the truth. Like I said, you do not want to feed beef heart, you do not feed beef heart. It is fine. It is something that I use as a tool. It's been used in our hobby for decades. 
I've been in the hobby for decades, and I used to believe that beef part, you know, because you think, oh, animal protein. Why, nothing in the Amazon is going to be eating animal protein. But if you really think about it, that's not true because, you know, jaguars kill deer or there's, there's actually cows in the Amazon. Deforestation of the Amazon is because they're making grazing for cows. Something falls in the water, a mammal, the piranhas come, they eat it up as much as they can, everything kind of is chewing on it, and that gets into the water column. Now a discus sees something floating by and it looks good and it's protein, they're gonna eat it. Am I gonna say it's a big part of their diet in the wild? Probably not, but do they eat animal meat in the wild? I would say 99.9% .9 yes, they get that sometimes. This is about getting fish to grow quick and grow big to help accelerate growth without causing harm to the fish. So one thing about my products is I use a lot of marine proteins. You know, a lot of cod, salmon, shrimp. And the reason I use salt water is because it's impossible for parasites to be transferred from salt water to fresh water or fresh water to salt water. So the science shows that that's pretty improbable. So that's my theory behind using marine protein. I don't just make these products and send them out. I test them. It's been about 10 months. So I started this process in January. By March, I had the formula and now I'm releasing it to the public. So it's on the website, shellerequatics.com. It's for members only. I release only to members first because I want my community to have first pop at this and I want to make sure that they are getting exactly what I described out of it. So that's why I release it to my members first. If you want to be a member, you can become a member for $25. The total cost is $125. I do not charge credit cards. I do not do monthly fees or anything like that. It's every time you order, you pay another $25 till the $125 is paid. All my products can be fed to all fish. You do not have to have discus. You can have any fish. I have guppies. I have rainbow fish. I have almost every fish you can think of, right? And I used to keep African cichlids and even Koala Green was designed for African cichlids. So there's plenty for everybody on the website. If you want to see where this journey started with Beef Heart, you can check out these two videos here. And it was in early March of this year that I made those. And they'll kind of explain my thought process at that time. All right, guys, that's it for today. Have any questions, leave comments below. Thank you. Take care. Bye.